Hello, my dear students. Uh, let us discuss about uh, one more in situ test or field test that is pressure meter test. The borehole pressure meter test is an in situ test developed uh, by Menard in 1956 to measure the strength and deformation characteristics of the soil. The pressure meter is used in subsoil investigation work for finding the in situ stress deformation characteristics of rock, gravel, sand, silt and clay deposits below ground level or above the groundwater level. With the help of pressure meter, continuously the stress deformation characteristics are obtained from the natural state of soil under gradually increasing radial stress. Before starting the actual pressure meter test, proper planning is needed to decide about the location of the tests. The test is done at different depths in a freshly drilled borehole with the help of a pressure meter which consists of an expandable prop with a measuring cell at the center and two guard cells at the top and bottom. You can see here uh, this is a Menard uh, type pressure meter. The prop is inserted in a pre-bored hole and is expanded in volume either by liquid or air pressure until the soil fails or the expanded volume of the measuring cell reaches twice the volume of the cavity. You can see here, okay, this is a guard cell, this is a prop. This is separately drawn here also. Prop, this is a gas guard cell and measuring cell water and this is a central tube and this is again guard cell and this is a gas. Okay. So, the prop is inserted in a pre-bored hole and is expanded in, expanded in volume either by liquid or gas or, until the soil fails or the expanded volume of the measuring cell reaches twice the volume of the cavity. The guard cells are used to minimize the end effect on the measuring cell. To prevent caving in the borehole, MS casing can be provided, means mild steel casing can be provided in order to avoid the caving. Okay, uh, the bottom of the casing is kept at least 1 meter above the desired test depth. This you have to make a note. The bottom of the casing is kept at least 1 meter above the desired test depth. Depending upon the soil condition, it is also possible to drill the hole 2 meter to 5 meter below the casing and do successive pressure meter test. Okay, this is the setup. Okay, borehole. This is a prop and uh, tubing, gas and water lines. And here the pressurized gas supply. This is a pressure gauge. A control unit overall the setup is control unit here there is a pressure gauge and pressurized gas supply and water volume indicator for the test so it goes from here to like this to the soil okay through the casing casing can be provided Analysis of test results using the results obtained by conducting pressure meter test at various depths. Typical pressure field curve for the stress versus deformation is plotted as shown in the figure. So, this is pressure acting on the soil, change in volume of the gravity. There are uh, three types of soils are shown here A, B, and C. Okay, uh, there are, uh, I mean, uh, it is the deformations. Uh, these are three types of deformation. There are three phases of deformation curve. The first one is re-establishing phase from the origin to point A. Here, this portion, this deformation is called as re-establishing phase. Okay, the pseudo-elastic phase that is from A to B. And this portion A to B that is called as pseudo elastic phase. 
and the last phase that is the plastic phase that is from B to C. After the borehole is drilled and the augers are withdrawn, the borehole walls relax, thus reducing the cavity volume. As the pressure meter prop is initially inflated, the walls of the borehole are pushed back to their original position. Point A marks the point at which the volume of the borehole cavity has fully returned to its initial position and is given the coordinates V0, P0. Okay? This is the point where the volume of the borehole cavity has fully returned to its initial position. The pseudo-elastic phase the straight line portion of the curve between the point a and b is double dubbed so because of its resemblance to the elastic behavior of steel or concrete the point b is the point at which creep pressure has been reached and is given the coordinates vf pf The plastic phase begins at point B and extends to point C which is asymptotic to the limit pressure. Point C which is given the coordinates VL, PL is defined as the point where the pressure remains constant despite increasing volume. The limit pressure is defined as the pressure required to expand the measuring cell by an amount V0 beyond the volume required to inflate the pressure meter Vc and to push the borehole wall back to its original position V0. The pressure meter can be used to aid in the design of foundations for all types of soils including residual soils. The settlements of foundations can be estimated using a deformation modulus E which can be derived from the pseudo-elastic phase or straight line portion of the load deformation diagram. The formula E is given by 2.66 into Vc plus V0 plus Vf divided by 2 into Pf minus P0 divided by Vf minus V0 where V0, P0 and Vf, Pf are the volume and the pressure at the point A and B respectively and Vc that is the volume of measuring cell in its natural state. The value of Vc depends on the size of the borehole. The injected volume at the limit pressure Vl is thus is given by Vl is equal to V0 plus Vc plus V0 that is equal to 2 V0 plus Vc where V0 is equal to volume required to inflate pressure meter and push soil to its original position and Vc initial volume of the measuring cell. The elevable bearing capacity of clay soil for shallow and deep foundations is generally determined from the pressure test results by the empirical and semi-empirical methods. For shallow foundations, the elevable bearing capacity may be considered as QA is equal to P1 divided by 3. For deep foundations, the elevable fractional resistance may be taken as FA is equal to P1 divided by 20. Thus, the pressure meter gives in situ lateral stresses in the ground, the stress strain behavior and the strength of soil at different depths. The test takes only 10 to 15 minutes after drilling operation. Since the results are available within a short time, it is possible to arrive at quick conclusions regarding the suitability of the site to be adopted. There are some advantages of pressure testing. For the self-pouring pressure meter, these can be summarized as follows. The tests are performed on virtually undisturbed soil. A large number of fundamental soil properties are obtained from a single test. To derive these properties, no empirical correcting factors whatever are needed. The test is controlled by a semi-automatic system and is largely independent of operator influence. 
patients. Results can be obtained quickly. Commercial operation has shown that the instruments, though more complex than conventional site investigation equipment, are reliable and have enough redundancy to permit useful readings even if a single fault appears. <clears throat> there are some disadvantages also. The instrument will not penetrate gravels, clay stones or the like. Operating in sands usually demands a cased borehole to a level 1 or 2 meters above the desired test locations. Failure planes and deformation modes are not usually appropriate to those occurring in the final design. In practice, only two stress paths can be followed, undrained and fully drained. Undrained tests must usually be performed at high rates of strain so as to prevent introducing errors. The instruments and their associated equipment are complex by conventional site investigation standards. Results obtained are sometimes surprising and in several cases have challenged conventional assumptions of soil mechanics. These are the some of the uh, disadvantages of pressure testing. So this is about the pressure meter. I hope all of you understood. Thank you.